Welcome back to TV for the 21st Century. Module number four, coming to you from TTJ Tech Services, the tech juggernaut at www.ttjtech.net. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get started so we can continue showing you how to make the most of your Apple TV. Wow, nice. Hey, my friends, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell. That does mean leave a like on this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel on YouTube if you've not already had a chance to do so. And then please don't forget to just very, very gently reach out and smash that notification bell. You know you want to. You know you want to stay in the loop so you always know what we're doing, when we're doing it. And by the way, feel free to leave a comment if you so choose. Okay. This, my friends, is module number four. And in module three, we've been talking about making the most of the Apple TV with voiceover. Now we're gonna talk about the Apple TV in more general terms. Um, so first of all, anything I talk about regarding prices and specifications, please keep in mind that it is accurate to the best of my knowledge as of today, Wednesday, June 15th, 2022, and reflects everything I know about the product at this moment. But keep in mind that pricing and so on is certainly subject to change without notice. We do the best we can to keep things up to date here at DTJ. Odds are we'll do another one of these next year, but we never know when Apple's going to change prices or release new generations of things. Also keep in mind that uh, when you do want to purchase, feel free to contact us and we're happy to help you. We have shopping assistance. And of course, you can always go right to the source, the Apple Store app, store.apple.com, 800-MY-APPLE, or your, visit your local Apple retail store. Now, also, don't forget that there are certain stores like Best Buy, Walmart, Amazon, and others that do tend to reduce prices on these things at special times of the year. For example, Black Friday, Christmas shopping season in general, and Memorial Day. As a matter of fact, Amazon is just coming off of a fantastic deal where you could get $50 off the Apple TV. I don't know if that's still on. I really should check because maybe I'll grab another one for an extra, you know, uh, one for another room of the house or something. You should get your hands on that, I tell you. But anyway, keep that in mind as well. All right, so the Apple TV, um, as we know it today, there have been other iterations, and for the sake of time, I won't go into them now, although it's an interesting history. Uh, but the Apple TV, as we know it, really began with the fourth-generation Apple TV, which, again, has been overhauled, modified, and now renamed. There are two Apple TV versions that you can get now, the Apple TV HD and the Apple TV 4K. And that specifically is the Apple TV 4K uh, second generation. That is the one that we highly recommend. Now, we actually recommend that Apple TV 4K even if you don't yet have a 4K television and have no immediate plans to get one because everything else about this Apple TV is really just uh, upgraded. The specs are excellent. Uh, this this Apple TV features the A12 Bionic processor, which is a six-core processor. Um, and quite honestly, as one YouTuber put it, that's almost comically powerful for a TV set-top box. And yet, it's another one of those differentiating factors that makes the Apple TV TV perform, excuse me, so well and so flawlessly. The experience is fast, smooth, responsive, and consistent even for our voiceover users. And that's something we cannot say about some other set-top boxes and their screen readers. So a lot of those are underpowered. This is just great. 
And uh, if you get the, the newest generation 4K Apple TV, you're also going to get a lot of other, you know, spec bumps in, in communications, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, things of that nature uh, that will help in other ways. Also, if you purchase anything new in the Apple TV space here, whether it is the HD or the 4K, as long as it's purchased directly from Apple and it's you're sure that it then is the latest and greatest, uh, you are going to receive with it the second generation Siri remote, not the first gen one. Now, if you still have a first generation Siri remote, that's fine. Although we encourage you to upgrade. We really like the second generation Siri remote as it's known here in the U.S. And that's what we're talking about uh, because, as we always say, we like to teach to the latest and the greatest here at TTJ. So that's what we're focused on. If you have questions about the first gen remote, we can certainly answer them during our live session. And I want to remind you that we've gone over this second generation Siri remote already in the previous module. So if you are not a voiceover user and you're thinking, well, I didn't listen to that because it was for voiceover users and there's nothing for me. Well, we actually did a pretty extensive discussion of the Siri remote, but I'll just mention it again very quickly as I hold it in my hand here. It is beautiful. It feels so good in the hand. It's a solid piece of aluminum, um, nice and sturdy, but not all the extra buttons that so many remotes have, these rubbery channel numbers and everything, just a handful of buttons here. Um, and no batteries to replace. Along the bottom edge of the Siri remote is the lightning connector. With your Apple TV, they do include a lightning cable. Uh, they do not include a power adapter, but you can plug this lightning cable into any existing USB power adapter um, because it is a USB to lightning cable uh, as far as I can remember. Now, what I encourage you to do instead, if you have anything that now has the 20 watt USB-C power adapter and you happen to have uh, USB-C to lightning cables, is use those. Um, you might even get a faster charge, I don't know, but use those uh, if you want to. Either one is fine. And you can um, also connect this to a computer, technically. Uh, I recommend uh, at least three to four hours to let this thing charge, although you should not need to charge it when you first get it. It should come fully charged or pretty much fully charged. And on a full charge, you can expect to get months of use on a battery charge. But, of course, that can vary depending on what you're doing with the remote. Uh, so, the Apple TV comes in two storage configurations. At least the 4K does. The, 30, the, the HD, I believe, is only one storage option now. But the 4K does have 32 and 64 gigabytes of storage. For most people, if all you're going to do is watch TV... We uh, feel that the 32 is probably just fine for you because this thing really doesn't store a lot of content. It is a streamer. I mean, it stores apps, but, you know, all the content is being streamed. Um, on the other hand, if you plan to do some gaming and download a lot of extra apps, then for the extra 20 bucks, uh, and really in any situation, if you can afford it, the extra 20 bucks doubles the storage. That's not a bad deal. And it gives you 64 gigabytes then of of internal uh, flash storage. Remember, it uses iCloud very heavily and streaming and so forth, and it's optimized for that, so you don't really have to worry too much about storage. There are also features like offload unused apps for those folks who are familiar with those features already. Uh, we're not going to get into tremendous detail about what they do today, but those are available as well for those who know about that. All right. Now, another thing I'd like to talk about, again, we did discuss this, but I want to talk again about the connectivity to your television, and we mentioned that we were going to come back to something called ARC or ARC or possibly EARC. Um, EARC, okay, so what we're talking about here has to do with audio, and I want to talk about how we can use the Apple TV with our existing televisions and home theater systems or what audio options you have, and I want to also discuss how to teach this remote the uh the you know how to control your television and the fact that in most cases you probably won't have to so it is definitely most people's desire i think to minimize the number of remotes that they have to use and companies have been trying to do that literally for decades at this point uh, by allowing remotes to be programmed to televisions with codes and things of that nature well in today's world apple of course as is often and typically the case, takes advantage of the, the best and the latest standards. And there is a standard out there called HDMI CEC. CEC is something that works over your HDMI connection and allows for your television to automatically respond to commands made to the third-party device. But let me try and say that in a slightly simpler way. CEC 
allows your TV to be turned off and on automatically by other devices when you start using them. And not only to be turned off and on, but to automatically switch to the correct input as well. Now, not every TV calls it CEC. It's kind of an open standard. And then every uh, manufacturer has their own name for it in many cases. I believe LG still uses the name Simplink. And there are a few others. Uh, typically, though, on the newest TVs, this is going to be on by default if it is available. The only thing you want to make sure you do when you are setting up your television is don't choose the like extreme power saver mode, um, you know, the eco, because then this feature won't work. OK, so you want to be and it usually will tell you that in the setup process, you know, if you want to be able to have your TV turned on by other devices, don't choose this, you know. So basically it's on by default. If not, you can go and grab your TV remote or an app for your TV if that's possible in many cases now, and control it, you know, and, and go into your settings and check that on out. But basically, what it means is that there's no programming required. Your television automatically responds. So not the first time. When you plug your Apple TV into the HDMI port, you'll probably need to turn the TV on manually and manually switch to the correct HDMI input. But once the Apple TV is up and running and it is fully set up, it will work. And so... Uh, there is a power button on the Apple Siri remote on the top right. You can press and hold that for about two or three seconds, and it will wake up the Apple TV as well as turning on your television. If your television happens to be on a different input, it will automatically switch it to the input that the Apple TV is using. And the really new ones, like our LG uh, ThinQ that we have, actually, uh, or I guess it's ThinQ. Is that the name of the, I forget if that's the name of the TV. That's the name of the app I use. But anyway, um, I think it is. Anyhow... Um, it even names the input. So it doesn't say like HDMI 1, HDMI 2. It says Apple TV uh, when I look at my input list. But I don't even have to look at my input list typically because, again, it automatically switches, praise God. So I just grab my Apple Siri remote and press and hold that power button for about two or three seconds, and everything is ready to go within five seconds, I'd say. And the, um, the simple fact is that many other buttons on the remote will also do this. If you press the back button, for example, that will also serve the same function. A lot of devices are doing this now. Uh, I mentioned a DirecTV stream device. I believe that supports it. Um, newer um, game consoles like the Sony PlayStation 5, PS5, Xbox, the most recent Xboxes, and I believe even the Nintendo Switches when they're docked. Uh, a lot of these devices will do it. Um, certain other, you know, smart uh Casting devices and so on will also do it, uh, but it is a very convenient feature and it means absolutely no programming whatsoever. The other benefit to this is that the volume button on the third-party remote, such as the Apple Siri remote, will automatically control the volume of your television or any connected sound bar. So if your TV is not using its internal speakers, if you have a sound bar hooked up to it or, you know, a, th a home theater system hooked up to it, even if it's um, in the, uh, you know, well, I shouldn't, that may not always be true. I take that back that I can't remember now, as a, a friend of mine likes to say, I've slept since then. Uh, but I, I think that even if it's in the optical audio port, it may try to control it. There are some cases where this is not going to work, though, and I think optical is probably, I'm probably wrong about that. Uh, you probably have to program that manually, which we're going to get to in a moment. But um, it will definitely control the internal speakers with the volume button automatically without any setup. Yeah, I do remember now you had to program it. So we'll, we'll get to that. But basically, um, you know, if you have the built-in speakers of your TV, the volume button will automatically control that if you want to uh, use a, an external device through optical audio, uh, there might be some programming required. We'll talk about the programming in a moment. Um, the other thing I want to say is that just as it does with turning it on, the power button also turns off all the connected devices. So you, again, press and hold it for two or three seconds. It will put the Apple TV in sleep mode and turn off your television. So it's very, very convenient, very easy to use, and we highly recommend uh, getting a TV if you're getting one now with CEC and enabling it if it's not already enabled. Now, what if your TV doesn't have CEC? Or what if you want to use an external um, soundbar or home theater system that requires, let's say, manual programming, either because it's using optical audio or for any one of a number of other reasons? Well, the great news is your 
Apple Siri remote can be programmed to control these TVs and uh, speaker systems manually. And it's a lot easier than it used to be with other devices. You don't need a code. You don't need to scroll through a long list of manufacturers and all that stuff. It's much, much easier than that. And all that it requires is that you use another remote that's already controlling the device. I, I almost wanted to say it requires the manufacturer remote from the other device that you wish to control, but that's not even true. Any other remote that's already controlling the device properly will work. And for, let me give you an example. Uh, we have a, uh, we used to have, we don't anymore, and I'm going to get to that in a moment because there's still an even better solution out there. Uh, but we used to have a sound bar and it didn't natively work with the Apple remote. And so what um, they wanted you to do was grab the remote that came with the sound bar. Well, I'll be honest with you, when I did this years ago back then, I had no idea where that remote was or if its batteries even still functioned. So what I did instead was I grabbed, because that was back when we still had a cable box also, and our cable box had already been programmed by the cable company to work with that sound bar. So what do you think that I did? I grabbed that cable box remote, which was already doing the right thing, and I used it in this process. So you can definitely do that. Now, the key thing is this has to be IR, infrared, okay? And um, again, you've got to have that other remote, whatever it may be. And what they're going to do is that uh, you go into the settings and, and set this up and they're going to walk you through pressing and holding the volume up and volume down buttons one at a time um, until the uh, Apple TV learns those. And what you do when you're doing this is hold the old remote, the other remote, whatever, right up to the Apple TV, not up to your sound bar or it's going to turn the volume way up when you press and hold the volume up button and stuff, right? But you hold it up to the... Um, you know, uh, Apple TV itself within a couple inches of it. And it sets that programming. You can give it a custom name. And this does work for built-in speakers on volume on TVs without soundbars if the CEC is not present or working. So you can still do that too. Now, um, this is obviously a last resort option. And there are some far better options that I'd like to talk about. Um, first of all, if you get a soundbar now that uses HDMI instead of um, optical audio, uh, then the Apple TV remote can probably already control it. And the reason is because of something called, remember I told you we were going to come back to it, ARC, or Audio Return Channel, also sometimes known as EARC. What this allows for is it allows audio devices to be controlled with other devices, just like CEC does for the, um, you know, connected devices. And so if your soundbar has HDMI instead of optical, what you want to make sure you do is connect that soundbar, the HDMI cable, uh, to the port on your television that says, ARC or EARC. And that, my friends, is a great way to control certain soundbars that um, have that ability. Now, there's still even something that, in my opinion, is even better. Because I believe that the best consumer speakers that are available are Apple's very own HomePod devices. Now, as of the recording of this module, there are not HomePod, full-size HomePods available. There are HomePod Minis available. They are great. They're available in several colors. I think there's space gray, and I think there's, uh, was it silver or was it white, orange, blue? There's uh, several different colors. Um, I don't know if I'm missing one, but... You can buy one or two of these. I like to buy two and pair them together as what's called a stereo pair. And you're getting a lot for your money here because they are a smart speaker. So they have Siri built in. You can make and receive calls and, and send and receive texts. You can keep your grocery list, check your calendar. Uh, you can set timers and name your timers. Uh, you can set alarms. You can... Um, 
oh, get general knowledge questions answered. It can tell you jokes. It can play ambient sounds for you and animal sounds. And of course, it can play music. It can access all of your Apple Music um, and all your purchased content. And it also works with some third-party apps automatically, like Pandora, for example. And then it also supports AirPlay, too, which we're going to talk about shortly for other um, things that you might want to play from your iPhone. And it even um, has, uh, it supports multi-room audio. So it's a great, great smart speaker. And one of the neatest uh, functions of this is its ability to be used as your TV speakers. And you can, with two of them, kind of create a home theater setup that really simulates a 5.1 surround system. Obviously, it's not a 5.1, but it really does its very best to simulate that. The full-size HomePods were just amazing, and I still have two of them in our living room. Uh, but the HomePod minis are still really, really awesome and still sound great with your TV. And I still think they're the best things out there, uh, better than any sound bar and, you know, so on, in my opinion. Um, I do, you know, recognize that there are rumors regarding full-size HomePods being released again, either later this year or in the coming years. Of course, I can't speak to any of that because Apple doesn't discuss unannounced products. So I have no idea what their plans are. Certainly, if I did have any idea, I wouldn't be allowed to tell you anyway. Uh, but yeah, I mean, right now the HomePod mini is your best bet and it is great. Okay. If you can get your hands on a full size HomePod and you know that it, you know, works and everything, that's fine too. Uh, but I really think having two makes a lot of sense. So when you do, you can set them up wirelessly. They don't need to be con connected to your television at all. Just, you know, plugged into power. And as long as they're in the same room as your Apple TV, they can be used as default speakers for your television. And here is yet another really awesome part. Remember we talked about ARC a moment ago? ARC serves a purpose here as well. You're not going to plug the HomePods into the ARC port because HomePods don't have HDMI. You're going to plug your Apple TV this time into the ARC port. What that will do is it will work normally for everyday use, but it also means that you can enable the audio return channel feature and then Anything else that plays through your TV will also play through your HomePods. That's right. The sound from your PS5, your Xbox, or any other box will now play through your HomePods. That is a really, really awesome feature that I highly recommend. So I think personally, my opinion, everybody who gets an Apple TV ought to also get a HomePod or two and use them as their full-time speakers, right? Use them all together. Make sure you have an ARC port. That's the only way that um, last part is going to work, where you are you know, uh, hearing other devices' audio through those as well. Um, but even if you don't have an ARC port, the first part works. Uh, the Using the HomePods as default speakers for Apple TV, you just have to make sure you have the Apple TV 4K in order to be able to do that. And it works both with the full-sized HomePods and the HomePod Minis. Okay, um, so that is a bit about the um, the various options. Uh, you know, I think, um, again, there's a lot of great features in the uh, Apple TV 4K that work with the newest televisions, things like 4K, Dolby Vision, um, HDR support, um, Dolby Atmos for sound, and of course, the ARC, the latest standards in HDMI, all of these things really do make a difference. So we encourage you to check all that out. And uh, that's all I've got for this module, but we will be back very, very soon with the next one. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and maybe even hit that bell. We'll see you back here very, very shortly. God bless you and take care. Care, my friend.